the main thing people come to my channel to see is pain challenges. I want to stand out from the crowd. It's funny to watch your friends fall on the floor or throw up. If people want to see it, I don't mind doing it. I'm going to delete my video as soon as I get home. The thing that influences me is other YouTubers, actually. I see them doing crazy stuff, and I want to step up the bar and do the next crazy thing. When I make a certain challenge, some people will try and recreate it. I've got a scar here from the 1000 degree knife challenge where they cut pears and stuff and fruit. I decided to cut my arm and I've still got the scar now. The challenge on the screen is the pass out challenge where you run around a field, hold your nose and then breathe as hard as you possibly can to make yourself pass out. I'm putting Tabasco sauce on my arm and I'm going to snort it up my nose. That is one of the most painful things I've done. The pain lasted for about half an hour as well. One of my biggest regrets um, is drinking a whole bottle of vinegar. What you don't see is the aftermath of this, and my body was telling me, get rid of this. I didn't research it properly to find out the dangers of it, and it can be really dangerous. I would say it was pretty difficult to breathe right there. I tried to leave my nostrils out of it, but it didn't quite work. Yeah, I think there's definitely a pressure for people to get on board with certain trends, um, just to try and stay relevant. There's a few channels, actually, with the same name as mine. They try and imitate me and do similar challenge videos. I kind of find it quite endearing, quite cool that someone would watch my stuff and think, oh, I want to recreate that. Hi, Peter. Hello. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, OK. So, uh, I'm Selena Booth, and uh, this is my son, Jack. My son died three years ago um, by playing the passing out game. It's basically a challenge where you cut off your airways to get a natural high. And um, unfortunately for some, they can take it too far like Jack did and um, can console your death. When I walked in his room on that Monday morning, I thought it was a mannequin in the bed. <laughs> you know, I didn't think it, it was him. I was laughing. I was like, you, you know, have you got a mannequin here for, you know? <laughs> Just something he would do. When I realised it wasn't this mannequin and I realised that it actually was my son, you know, it hit hard because I knew this kid's not going to leave me. He's my best friend, you know, we're everything together. Oh, he was always so happy, he just smiled all the time, he's the... God, I miss him so much. It's quite a difficult thing, I wasn't expecting this. I kind of, before, before coming out, I thought it'd be quite a light-hearted interview, but Don't obviously worry. this is taking it um, a step further. So I want to keep it light hard because it's like, you know, I've been watching you and you are funny and you are silly. But sometimes, you know, you go too far. I can't, like, be sorry enough for how it can progress, like, that quickly. Because, like you said, at 14, they're not, we're not developed. So we think it's just harmless fun. You know, watching your vinegar one, how many silly kids went out and drank that? You know, and like you said earlier, Nobody saw you for the last two hours being sick in the sink. Why not? What you say does make sense that and maybe I should have shown the repercussions and shown what happened. And maybe if someone had posted online um, the actual dangers of the pass out game, it's, listen, this is incredibly dangerous, incredibly stupid, do not do it. M maybe things would have been different. My mum would always be worried. She was like, one day she might come home to me, um, you know. Dead. Maybe dead, done something really stupid because uh, I did do stupid things. As you're uploading everything, how would you like 
and live with yourself if that was one of your mates there. I don't think I could do it to myself and I understand that it must be really hard for you to come here today and talk to me about this and I'm so grateful because now I'm more aware of what I'm posting on the internet. Before this, before meeting you, I may not have thought about it in that respect. Um, I may have thought it was just a silly video I'm putting online. It's quite a unique experience to meet someone on the receiving end of the negativity that can come out of what people post online. You were saying earlier you still got your YouTube account. Is this still on there? And the rest of them? Uh, the, this YouTube account is still active and this is still on there. However, this will be deleted after hearing your story because I find must, I'm disgusted in myself from what this can happen to young children. Every YouTuber should definitely nail down on trying to promote in their videos, preface their videos by saying, kids, please do not try this. If you do do another video, yeah. would, would you be doing that? I would definitely put a warning at the start now, knowing how much of an effect it can have on a kid like Jack. Meeting you today has definitely had an impact on me personally and made me think I have a bigger responsibility than I maybe realise. That I do have young, impressionable people watching me. That's what creators and people on YouTube need to understand and take responsibility for. Do you take them off YouTube? Meeting you now, yeah. Oh. <laughs>